I got Guy here with me as well. Guy, say hi. What's up, man? Good to have you, man. And uh, we have a, a great friend who we've known in many capacities throughout the years. Uh, and we finally decided to have him on the show. We had a powwow, I think it was like last week or two weeks ago. And we were like, how have you not been on our podcast yet? Mm. Uh, so some of you guys might already know him and or follow him. His name is Alex. Alex Mosk. I don't know why I called you Alex. Yes. Alex Mosk. Especially considering your father's name is the same as this guy's and, name. And my dad's name is Alex. Yes. Uh, Alex. Alex. Yeah. Alex Moscow. Uh, so Alex, first of all, welcome to the show, brother. Thanks, man. It's uh, it's <laughs> I'm super excited to be on. Yeah, it's like we've been on the this journey together for like I think we've been together for like seven years, seven or eight years, huh? It, it's it's been, yeah. yeah it's, I, I don't know if it's been that long, but it's definitely been like six. Around around that five six for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely around six. Yeah, and it's funny I'm, because I'm, so, to be go clear, ahead, go ahead. I'm I'm half Asian, so my math only works half the time. So uh, get a little, but like numbers get a little screwy for me sometimes. Yeah. Um, it's funny <laughs> because when we met Alex the first time, uh, you were working at the time we had met you through Ted McGrath, right? And you were working with Ted, and um. Yeah, like we were fairly new to the game at that point when we met Ted. You were, you know, brand new to the kind of that world. And it's just funny. Here we are, like whatever it is, five, six, I don't know how many years later, and um, just rocking out. So without uh, bursting your bubble, why don't you tell people a little bit about your story and what you're up to nowadays? And um, we'll go from there. Totally. So for my whole life, like I, I knew at a young age, like I wanted to, to be an entrepreneur you know since i was like probably five or six i always wanted to, to like do things my way i always wanted to really help people in a big way too and the the big challenge for me was that i i actually had a speech impediment with a stutter for my whole life and i still even to this day get really passionate when i speak so i still may trip up on my words but it was a lot worse when i was younger and i just um clinical speech therapy didn't work for me so i've been in personal growth and spirituality for pretty much my whole life and so i was I was, um, as I was, as I was, um, going throughout, you know, high school and college, I, I would, I would always do pretty much anything to get people to like me. You know, there was that, that tone of just like, I never felt good enough. I always felt like I had to like overcompensate for my stutter. And I just kind of felt like, like an outsider. And my, my biggest fear underneath all that was like, I just, I really just wanted the chance to it just be understood. Mm. And so I would always overcompensate. I was always going above and beyond. And so much so, you know, fast forward into college. Um, it's, it's May 5th and um, yeah, Cinco de Mayo, 2008. And I uh, walk into my fraternity, huge party going on for Cinco de Mayo. And, you know, fast forward about, you know, one in the morning, it's, I'm probably 13, 14 drinks in and I get this great idea. I was like, I'm going to go home with a beautiful girl tonight. Like that's, that's exactly what's going to happen. So I look around and I see, you know, um, brunette, black dress, brunette, red dress. And I was like, Ooh, there's blonde short skirt. That's, that's the one. <laughs> so I go and talk to her and I, uh, we, I talked to her for about half an hour and then I was like, let's go back to my place and I live off campus. So we get my car and I'm probably 16, seven drinks in probably a couple lines of cocaine. And we get my car and I speed off to my house. And so I'm going really fast and I'm getting on the freeway and I'm cutting in and out of traffic. And miraculously somehow we get back to my place safely and we do our sleepover thing and pass out at probably four, four in the morning or so. And at five thirty six, just like out of an action movie that you see all the time, like my whole window shatters and I have men and rifles come in in full SWAT gear. And they're yelling DEA, DEA. And I get thrown on the floor, butt naked, hands behind my back, and I get arrested for selling drugs. Wow. And so that's my first experience as an entrepreneur. <laughs> you're you're a shitty entrepreneur if you got caught dude <laughs> totally, totally, totally. rule number one of drug dealing don't get fucking caught yeah well, I, I didn't I, I didn't do so well on that one no, so, no. 
so from there, like that, that's literally yeah. what started my whole journey into, into like this space, space that I'm at now. I was like, wow, Incredible. like I just got arrested. I was on the fucking CNN news. You know, I got like the DEA, like not like the cops, like the DEA comes through my window. Right. And so like, I obviously was like, wow, like maybe I could use some help or you know, I need to yeah. seek outside <laughs> counsel, some guidance. And so I, I did what any 19 year old kid is. I was actually brought to my first seminar at that point. And that's when, like, I remember being in that room, though, like, in that seminar, and I, I would, like, felt just a knowingness in me, like, I'm sure that both of you guys have felt this and the people listening have of, in different moments in your life, of that just, like, wow, like, this is, this is why I'm here, like, and for me, it was, I've always been about creating experiences, you know, as someone who stutters, I was still like very social, I, I, but I planned a lot of the parties. Like I, I did a lot of the social events that way. I didn't have to go out and talk to people. People would come and talk to me. And so like, I, as I was there, I was like, holy shit, like you can create an experience for someone, but not like get, get everyone super messed up, but you can inspire them to change their life. And I was like, whoa, there is something here. So I wish I could tell you, you know, like that the heavens parted, you know, God, the universe came down and changed everything, but that's not what happened, but that was the first tra trajectory shift. And I believe our life unfolds by the, by these small micro alignments. All those micro alignments really change the entire trajectory of our life. And so that's when I got into, I got into internet marketing and I, I, I hired a, a, my first big coach who was Ted, actually. He helped me land, he helped me land a six figure client when I was 21 years old, mm. a $109,000 contract. It was insane. Damn. And I learned very quickly. I had no freaking clue how to run a business. I had no clue. So I was burning out. I want to burn a business to the ground. And then the universe aligned and Ted, um, he fired his whole staff and I fired all my clients. And that's when he asked me to partner up. So mm. I've been in this space for seven, seven and a half years. Um, and with him, I did, you know, 100 hour work weeks for four and a half years. And it was the greatest education that I could have asked for. But now, like, as, as I went out on my own three years ago, I looked at, okay, like, what is like, what can I really help people with? And this is something that I wanted to speak to, because I believe a lot of people who go into this space, you know, they, 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 they come from a similar um, situation. So oftentimes, is they like have a mentor, they work for a mentor, and they, they like learn all these skills. And they're like, okay, now I want to go do it, do it by myself. Where do I start? So for me, I was like, okay, what can I help people with most? And so like I, w I helped coach, I helped Ted build his, um, his business from literally there was $5,000 in the bank when I started. There was multiple seven figures when I left. All of his different clients, you know, they're all coaches too. So I've been building coaches. I've been building businesses for coaches and experts for, you know, for four and a half years of taking them from zero to, a, you know, half million, seven figures and beyond. And so I was like, what's the one thing, like out of everything that I can do, like what's the one thing that would be the most impactful to, for my client? And it was all around, it, it was all around it, it, the enrollment. Like if you don't know how to enroll clients as a coach, you, you really don't have a coaching business, you know? It doesn't matter how big your mission is, how much you can help people. And this is the big thing. It doesn't matter how badass or amazing of a coach you are. If you don't know how to get clients, it, those people's lives don't change. So fast forward to now, like I have, I'm so, so grateful. Like I literally feel like I'm living my dream life where I get to hang out with amazing guys like you guys. This is like what I do in the morning to hang out with. You guys are awesome. We also hang out out outside we have a friendship outside of that too and like i live in beautiful san diego and um i like last year and just to be clear i don't have like the multi-million dollar coaching empire but i i did you know six hundred and twenty thousand last year i worked about 15 20 hours a week um i traveled the world with my girlfriend and like my clients get astronomical results and they're the, the like beauty of it for me is i get to literally see someone come in who's an amazing coach but they're they're like their bank account doesn't match the amount of transformation and the, amount, and the amount of like breakthrough that they create for their clients and you know as 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 like a, a true giver and someone who wants to really contribute and like I started that same way too and what I've learned is that like when you're financially successful your ability to help is so much amplified so um so I'm so grateful to have life now and like really um my the main thing they help people with is helping coaches and experts to enroll high-end clients so that was like a little bit of the long version but I, no, I felt it's beautiful sure share it with you guys here because I don't know if you guys have, have uh, heard that that version of it no I haven't and it's amazing and I love <laughs> I was like I was like man that was good copy um you're telling <laughs> you're telling this whole story about the car and everyone is just sitting there is like waiting for you to wrap that thing around a tree and have like the near-death experience you're like and we made it home just fine <laughs> I was like I was like oh clever <laughs> wait there's more yeah. yeah um dude brilliant just amazing and um Alex, like the first thing I, I, before we talk about all that other stuff, because you, you you touched on it before, and 
um, I, we just kind of like, there, there's so many other questions I have, but first and foremost, because people are uncomfortable getting in front of people, speaking in front of people, right? Sharing their gifts in front of people. And it's interesting how you, because of how you used to stutter, you kind of like created this whole strategy around having people come to you so you didn't have to do all that stuff. And what I find amazing about your story is that your gift, and it really is your gift, is inspiring people to live their greatest life, to share their gifts with the world. And like, how ironic that the person that sat behind the scenes and like wouldn't talk to anybody and do all that stuff is the person out there doing it. And mm -hmm. so I'd love for you to just share a little bit of what you went through to be able to do that because so many people are sitting on the sidelines with such gifts with, um, I, I don't know if it was a lot to overcome or not, but like, you know, for most people that perception of like, Oh my God, you know, I'm stuttering and then I have to go stand on stage in front of people like that's suicide. Right. So they have to conquer quote unquote, even way, way less than that. And so to them, I think hearing the story of like how you've, use this as one of your greatest assets and, and, and skills. Um, I think that would be just amazing for people to hear. Totally. So oh, such a great question. Like there's a few things that come up. Like there was like, so for myself, when I was working in Ted's organization and like, I, I always saw myself, you know, like people were coming to me and I was help them. I'd coach them to get, they'd get great results. But my whole identity was like, I didn't really know who I was, you know, mm -hmm. and it was like, are they listening to me because I'm in an organization? Are they listening to me because of Ted? So all that shit come up, right? And so as in, I'm, so, <laughs> and one of the things I'm so grateful for with Ted is like, he just like, he just threw me into situations and he like, it forced me to figure shit out. And I believe that's, it was one of the greatest gifts that, and I believe uh, uh, incredible mentors do that because I believe we're so much more powerful than like we believe that we truly are. And if we're thrown in a situation where we have to perform, you really get to know about yourself. And so the example that I'll give is we, we, we did this launch and we, we generated like 70 strategy sessions. So 70 sales calls. And so he's, Ted was like, cool. So the sales team is going to take all these calls. And I was like, we don't have a sales team. And he's like, you're the sales team. <laughs> <laughs> and so like, I'm, I'm at that that point and like I, I stutter and so I was like cool so you're giving the kid who stutters 70 calls to take and so like I learned I had to like like not so just like in general you know I had my own sales fear and we can talk about that in, in later on possibly but like there's 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 just stigma or there's stigma in the in the in the collective consciousness just around sales yep there's stuff that's passed down from our parents and you know what they believe around sales in like the in the, the media as well if you look at the uh the wolf of wall street there's a whole movie made around like sales is like manipulative and sales is you know all these different things yep. there's all that you know my own sales my own sales fear of like being judged of wanting to be liked of all that but oh yeah i have this stutter where like i still was waking up and like i'm scared people are going to judge me then i think you know i'm stupid or i'm handicapped or mm. you know that like you know what the hell, why is this guy on the phone with me you know he can't even talk he can't even say his own name how is he going to mm. help me so like, i have all of those voices wow you know? and stacked with a sales fear and so what i as i started to do it as I started to take these calls, I realized, you know, like what was more painful than my fear was having a conversation with these incredible people and like knowing that I had something that could help them, but them not saying yes. Mm -hmm. and, the, and like, I knew I could see it so clearly and like, it was painful. And they told me, you know, like, and I believe any, any good consultative sales process will do this of, you know, they're telling me, you know, like what's, what's wrong, what's not working, you know, how long they've been suffering, you know, they've been suffering with it for, so I'll give my example in my industry. So they've been a coach for, for seven years and um, they've been a coach for seven years and they've been telling their spouse that things are going to get better for the past six years. And they haven't, and they've, they've been promising their spouse and their kids are going to go on vacation, but they haven't. You know, and so they're telling me all these things and like, what would be possible if they could, you know, and what type of role model that they would be as a mother or a father if they were able to just get their business together. Then at the end, I would make an offer for them to for a program that could help change that I know that I've seen work. And then them still saying no. And that was just so freaking painful. Mm. And so I made a decision at that point 
to not let my own bullshit get in the way of helping other people. So that was that, and that's something that I continue to because I what I what I found personally is that whenever I have that resistance or that fear, you know, like it, it's it's all self centric thinking. It's all thinking about myself. What are they going to think about me? Oh, what if they go and tell someone else that I sold them too hard? You know, like that's all stuff that comes back to me. When I believe in sales, especially. And also in, in getting our gifts out to the world, it's like the more that we get ourselves out of the way, the freaking better, you know, because the thing that holds us back is, is all of our own limiting beliefs and all of, all, all of the, the made up shit that we think people are going to say when we don't even know if that's true. Unbelievable. So, so beautiful. So a couple of things I want to highlight that I wrote down. One, you said when the pain of having them say no was greater than my personal pain. Mm. And I just want to, highlight that for people right and the other thing that that segues beautifully into that is when you made it more about them than about you and then the last thing that i think is just so brilliant right like your entire life you had an identity and i'm talking to every single one of you guys not just alex right like you have an identity who you are how you are people have reaffirmed that you've got an agreement from everywhere right so alex stuttered and that was his identity and so he had to give up his identity in order to serve others at the highest level and i would venture to say alex that like you continuously because i know we do also continuously give up our identity even if it got us to a certain place and it empowered us and all that stuff like i just had a coaching call the other day with our coach and he was taking me through this process and at one point, I'm in this state where I'm like, the best way I can explain it, if you've ever come out of like a really, really, it's like, a, it's like coming out of a really, really deep meditation plus being on ecstasy. It was like that experience where everything's like fuzzy and like soft mm -hmm. and it's just empty in your brain and you can't really think and like your body is just so like tingling, but you can't really move thoughts you're, you're talking slow your eyes are like a little bit shut everything and he's like this is the state that i live in and i'm like how like i couldn't even imagine having a conversation with one of my clients from this state i feel like just in this place of like oh right mm -hmm. and he goes that comes from a pattern of you believing that you need to show up a certain way as a coach you have an identity of what a coach looks like mm -hmm. And the second he said that, I was like, wow. Mm -hmm. Right. And so even for me and like that identity is, I, I love that identity. You know, like in your case, you probably wanted to get rid of that identity, but like, I really love that identity and it's still limiting. And I think that's so brilliant for people to hear like all the shit that you have about yourself, you fucking made up. Mm -hmm. And then all these other people, reaffirmed it for you because you taught them to reaffirm it to you. Like what would life look like if you got to give that up? And the only way to do that is I, and I think Alex, you hit the nail on the head and thank you, Ted, right? It's like you get thrown in there and you realize like, I'm either going to sink or I'm going to swim. And in order to do that, you need to learn some life lessons. So well, well, I want to, I want to add on to that also, you know, like I, <clears throat> it's funny cause now what I find is like, yeah, there's like these identities we're giving up but then we have like a preconceived notion of a, the identity that we're working towards. And it's oftentimes where these little events happen that surprise us, like kind of what you just had with, with our coach, it like diverts your attention. And it's like, Hey, this identity you've been building towards, that's also, you just think that that's for your highest and best, but your highest and best is really over here. There's a little bit of challenge. You're going to go through some emotional experiences that you don't quite know. And, and I find this in every area of life. Like for me, I've, you know, I've been a really heady, male like like most men right it's like all you, you just pull your energy up you start using your brain and logic for everything now i find that like my peace my power everything comes from my heart I, I, i'm in this desire to create this balance now i've had this identity that's like oh it's good here's what's going to look like when i'm like balanced in my emotional space right and i think i know what that's going to look like and it's almost like i'm working towards that archetype and then i find like that, that my ideas of what that looks like has also come from media, from conversations, from books and from everything else and not really coming from my internal state and what's and really what's in alignment with like my divine blueprint, my divine guidance. 
and, and it's, it's, I'm, I'm in that state all the time. And, and more recently, uh, I was like in a session and I thought to myself, it's funny that I'm trying to look emotional the way that other people look when they're emotional. Huh. You know, it, it like occurred as just interesting to me. I'm like, wait a second. I'm like, maybe this is why it hasn't really clicked in the way that I wanted to. Cause I keep trying to look like other people when they're cathartic or when they're crying or when they're sad. And it's just not the way my body processes that. Um, so yeah, I, I keep finding this in every area of my life. And in fact, it's, it, it's helped me actually accelerate my growth, I believe. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So Alex, I want to talk a little bit about what you do now. And thank you, by the way, for sharing that story. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, so Alex runs a company called Effortless Enrollment. And obviously here at uh, Satori Prime, we're, we're big proponents of effortlessness. So um, say more about what that looks like um, from, from the work you do and the clients that you get to work with, things like that. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's funny. I was just having this conversation the other day and like effortless enrollment, like, cause so the, the, the thing about enrollment is er, enrollment oftentimes is not effortless. Like it's, it's, it's not at all. It, it, you, most people perceive it enrollment as work. Um, what, what I believe makes it effortless is, is when you become that and you show up as, as that highest, most authentic version of yourself. And when you speak truth into someone's life. So effortless enrollment is, it's a, like from a, a like one line marketing perspective, it's helping coaches and experts to effortlessly enroll high end dream clients into their programs and events. And so, but how that's actually done is it's like, I, I do have my systems. I do have my frameworks, I have my scripts. And what I believe makes it effortless is when my clients bring that badass coach that they are into their sales process. Cause something fascinating happens from what I found is that like, they're, they're like that, the badass coach that challenges their clients that holds them to a higher standard that, you know, that like points out the different blind spots that they don't see when someone buys. And for some reason, like on the other side of the coin, when in the sales process, it's a completely different person that shows up. Oftentimes, this is what I found working with, you know, a thousand different coaches is that on the sales side and the, in the enrollment process, their, their sales conversations, whatever you want to call them, free coaching sessions, they like, they, they just don't show up the same. They like want to be like, they don't want to ruffle feathers. They don't want to stir the pot too much. Um, and oftentimes they also do not even coach. So there's a lot of coaching process. There's a lot of sales process out there that for coaches, they say, don't solve the problem, you know, don't do this, just ask questions, which like that works sometimes, you know? And I believe what, like you, you need to give them an experience of, of, of what it would be like to actually work with you. So and this was like, I teach this. So this is like a core foundation of what I teach because of so much of my story was like, I, I wanted to be liked. I don't want people, you know, I don't want to be judged. Like my biggest thing was that I was so fearful of, that if, if I, if I enrolled someone too hard and they went out and like told other people that I did that, like that would, that was like my mm. greatest fear. And what I realized though, is that like that, the way that I challenge my clients to, to step up, the way that I challenge the best, the best versions of themselves to show up, that's the exact reason why people buy. Like, that's why they work with me. And it's also like, you know, what, what I learned from Frank Kern is like, show people you can help them by actually helping them. So I believe that that applies in marketing. That also applies in your sales process. So effortless enrollment, it's, it's my brand on high-end sales. And it is effortless when like you're showing up like that, when you're showing up in your authenticity, when you're showing up and you're speaking truth, like a big you know, component that I teach is truth outsells tactics. Like truth will always outsell any sales tactics. Like an example for that to put it, give context and like concreteness to it is, is like, you know, a lot of coaches sell uh, on a, discounts and like I used to sell this way a lot and it freaking works and it's just not the way I choose to, to to run my company now so for example you know you can frame a discount in a beautiful way where it doesn't sound like a discount where it's like hey you know this is our first time talking and I like to reward my clients for taking action so I'm going to give you a scholarship so the course is usually five thousand dollars but I'm going to give you scholarship pricing if you take action today because I like to reward my clients for taking action and so if you, it's, and so it's like, it's a three, three, it's, you get the $3,000 scholarship if you buy today on this call, which in reality, it's, it's a fucking discount. Like it's a discount and still call it what it is. And so for me, like it, it works it, that, that process works. If that's what you want to run your business. Amazing. No judgment towards that. For me, I don't want my clients buying based upon fear of missing out like that. I believe that what, what, what most coaches don't realize is that the enrollment conversation, the enrollment process, literally, 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 uh, Anyways, um, it, it's like the entire, it's the entire like foundation for the whole relationship. Like you're going to, 
you're going to offer some type of transformational program, a retreat, a six month program, a year long mastermind. And like, that's the whole start of it. And so like, I want to build that start on a solid foundation. I don't want that start to be on based upon scarcity, you know, a fear of, Oh my goodness, if I don't buy today, like I'm going to, um, I may miss out on this. So I want them buying based upon their commitment to taking action on their vision and solving one and solving what their, what their challenge is. That's just me personally. So that's what like, and I believe when like, that's are so much of like my values and what enrollment becomes effortless when you have your values in, in your, your enrollment process. So that's, that's like a, a high level view of, of really um, what I do high end sales, but also the like message behind it and how I do it. Yeah. There's something really interesting. And I, and I think, we, we say this, and I think people who are starting out hear this all the time, that when you make it about money, you struggle. And when, when it stops being about money, you really succeed. Um, but the funny part is that when you're starting is when you need the money the most. And that's when you need to focus not the least on the money. So it's, it's kind of uh, counterintuitive. And, and I love what you said there about um, bringing themselves like their true authentic self to those conversations. Um, can you say more of the process that you take people through to do that? Uh, because I, I'm with you. I'm in a hundred percent agree that the more you are, you, the more money just shows up in your bank account effortlessly. Um, and people sometimes hear that they're like, but I am being me. Yeah, I, I believe be, being you is just a component. Like it's like you have to learn business. So like I work with, you know, I work with like uh, some of my clients are like incredible transformational like experts, you know, but so it sometimes deals with like, you know, really woo woo shit, but they get awesome results with it, you know? So like they still, you can't just be super woo and, um, and not have the like business skills to like enroll a client, you know? So you, it, I believe that there's a, a like healthy medium that, that needs to happen there. So like, I believe it's being you is, is, is a component and, um, and there, there, there also needs to be a structure for somebody to flow into. So for example, like I, I believe that like scripts don't work. Like I give my clients, my, my sales script that's sold, you know, over $10 million and like, it's what they think that they need, but it's not, it's, it's, it's what they want, you know? Mm. And so I, I give it to them, you know, and, and I say that like an example I give is if you look at Hollywood, like Hollywood, you know, if there's a, a huge blockbuster film, you know, there's, there's an audition and then there's, you know, thousands of actors and actresses that come out for the parts. And so what do they all have in common? You know, like they all read from the same script. So what separates, you know, the, the like actor, actress that gets the part, you know, goes on to win the Oscar rather than, you know, the like starving actor, actress who's been waiting tables in Hollywood for the past 10 years. Is it the script? It's not, you know, it's their ability to find their own truth in the script and their ability to, to authentically embody it. So that's what I mean by in, in the sales process of like, cause you can take like, like, cause you know, most of my clients come in and I was like, have you used a sales script before? They're like, yeah. I was like, cool. How's that working out for you? Like, no. Or they're like, well, it's not, you know, that's why I'm here. I was like, cool. So my script is not going to be like the, the magic bullet for you. You know, it's, you need to be like, that's what I mean by like being a, congruent coach and congruent closing, you know, effortlessly enrolling clients. It's about like when you're talking to someone and this is what I mean by being yourself. It's like someone has like a, a prospect will have an infinite amount of excuses of why they can't do something, you know, like that, that's, that's their own belief systems coming up in, in the sales process. And you can't have the like objection handlers Bible next to your side of like, of the, what's the line to say that's going to get them to buy, you know, like you really need, to be able to like congruently stand in and be you in that badass coach that you are to coach them through that because that's all objection handling is you know it's coaching someone through what what their, what their limiting mindset is of why they can't have something um so to bring that back it's like being you is extremely important like on my sales calls i drop f-bombs you know i that's just the way i talk you know if they're gonna have a problem with me dropping an f-bomb on the sales call they have a big problem with me dropping f-bombs in my course sure so, like so that's what i mean um I feel like I kind of went around the question. So if you, if you want to ask me something more specific um, for, for like what you're looking no, for. It, it was fine. Here, here's where, where I'm uh, where I was kind of thinking is like, I think in the beginning, because the focus tends to be on, I have to have that client, 
right? Or I got to make that first sale or I have to make my $10,000 a month or $100,000 a year or whatever, you know, their goal is at the time. Um, they will go into their pattern. So like you mentioned a pattern of I had to be liked. That pattern doesn't just disappear. It's not like, okay, let me put that on the side and let me go have these conversations with people. Like it shows up to every one of these conversations. And one of the things that we work with people on is like when you become aware of said patterns, now you have a choice. And in that choice, you get to show up however you want. Now, sometimes it's exploring new things. So Ted threw you into the deep end of the pool, right? And was like, swim. Guess what? You have to figure some shit out. And you probably messed up the first, God knows, 7, 10, 15, 20 calls. But like, it wasn't messing up. It was just getting into the process and understanding what's stopping you and all that stuff. So when, when I was asking about like the process of unlocking you, I'm sure in the beginning you were nervous to curse on a sales call because you heard you're not supposed to do that. Um, you heard that challenging someone on a phone call or, or making them feel uncomfortable isn't good for closing a sale. So like you would go about doing that. And then at some point you become more and more grounded in who you are and the value that you are for people, right? Like when you got, holy shit, this course, you know, when, even when you're promoting Ted stuff, like this shit really works. So I feel bad when people don't do it because I know that this can change their lives, right? And then you make that shift and then it's more about, I'm willing to go to places on that call that maybe aren't comfortable for me and in the end, will empower that person to make a very, very powerful choice versus I'm going to get in my own way because of all my bullshit. Like I have to be this and I have to be that and I have to be this. So I, that's why I was asking like, is there some sort of tip or process that you can share with people um, who are sitting on the sidelines and, and debilitated by these patterns, quote unquote, um, and stopping them from, from really delivering value? Yeah. Like I would say like one in the sales process, is, is just if you focus on helping them like put all the focus on them you know like that's really like the, the number one key thing of just like you know in like what what is in their best best interest like i believe that's where a lot of people fall short is they make it about them they, they want the sale they want to be attached to the sale and so like like a, a, an assignment that i give my clients is like have 10 conversations where your goal is to make 10 is, is to make 10 offer is to get 10 no's like your goal is to get 10, 10 no's. So run the process the entire way, make the offer and then get, get a no, get a no. And then in that process, the, what they find is they usually get like one or two yeses in that. They're like, Oh my God. But like, yeah. cause they have like, they're, they're going after a, a yes. You know, that's subconsciously what they want. They want the money. They want the client, whatever they want to help the person. Yes. They, I believe they want all of them. And like, but when their focus is so dialed into one thing that I believe that they're missing um, they're missing so many other, you know, uh, beautiful tips along, along that whole way. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I think, especially in the coaching field, you know, look, it's, it's a relationship business. And I think a lot of people think of sales as one and done specifically when you're doing like top tier high end type of stuff. Like you don't want to bring somebody in. I, I don't even think I want to bring someone in who I had a 15 minute conversation with and they're like, yeah, I want your program. They don't know the first thing about me. I don't know the first thing about them. We might not even be a good fit for one another. And I, I think kind of like what we're seeing with food, right? Like food went from being really wholesome and organic. Nobody even knew that it was to kind of like this fast food movement because I, I want what I want. I want it right now, right? That had all sorts of problems. Now the, the biggest growing market is actually slow food. So it's almost like we went from like fast sales, like give me the solution now to, mm -hmm. to slow. I know anybody who we've hired for a significant amount of money multiple conversations were had like multiple it's it's kind of this organic relationship that just grows over time and then you both go into it feeling really 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 good i i actually believe if you remove and and i'm sure alex for you because people come to you are kind of in that scarcity mindset maybe they're just getting a business started they you know they're they're investing quite a bit with you they want the results right now they don't come they start freaking out and then every phone call becomes a matter of life and death and if you're, if you can kind of displace that, and again, just go back to some of the principles we're talking here and say, Hey, this is about making sure that I can look at the symptoms that you have in life and, and what I can produce is going to create, um, quantifiable results for you. 
then, then I want to work with you. If what I have is not going to do that, even if you want what I have, I have the ability to say no. But if you just get on any call and it's not about making the sale right now, it's just about making that next step happen. And that me- next step might be you going, all right, you know what, let me get off this phone as the person selling the product and see if this feels good for me. And then why don't we get back on the phone in a week and we'll both see how we feel at that time. And that removes a lot of the pressure. I think that that lets the the conversations grow a lot more organically. Is that something you would agree with? Um, yeah, I believe it's, it's different strokes for different folks, you know, like there's like, I believe that there are, there are certain clients where that's a hundred percent fit, like, like that, that's hundred percent fit. That's the way that they make decisions and they make powerful decisions. Um, other people, like I believe the complete opposite of like they, they've had a challenge for eight years. They've, they're on all these mm-hmm. coaching calls. Like they don't make decisions that, 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 that's, that's the exact problem. So for those people, I'll say, no, like, I'm like, there is no think about it. You know, there is no <laughs> call next week. It's like, cause in my program, I need you to be able to make fast decisions and take action on them. You, you can't wait another eight years for this. Gotcha. Like, you go in my program. You can't wait eight years. You can't go think about everything that I tell you to go do. You have to be able to listen and you have to be, go out and, and do it. So, so that's the way that I'd frame it. You know, like, I believe there's, that's what I mean by like, there's not like one, I, I believe sales is not a one size fits all. Um, I believe it's, there's, there's, there's different sides of it, you know, but and for people just starting out low, you know, like a process, like what you just share, like that, that also, um, that may be difficult as well, because um, I actually don't recommend that people just starting because I know there's so much emotional investment that goes into that next call the week after, you know, and the also percentage of people who hop back on that call oftentimes is, is low if they don't have a follow-up process or they're not like sending, you know, emails to them or reminding them or giving value, you know, the, the chances of them getting on that call is lower. So uh, what, what I like to do with people just starting is like, is, 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 to, dis- is to come to a d- d- decision on that call, whether it's a yes or it's a no, or, or t- 24 hours, like, hey, sleep on it, like, sit with it, like, doesn't have to be on this call, but let's hop back on tomorrow, we know, and, and we'll, we'll both come on to, to share whether it's a yes or whether it's a no. Cool. Yeah. Um, real quick, what are, uh, or maybe not real quick, but what are some of the biggest mistakes that you see people when they are uh, trying to build that business, whether it's from, you know, zero to a hundred thousand or a hundred thousand to a million or a million and above. Um, what are some of the biggest mistakes you see people making time and time again? Yeah. Number one is if you're not, I believe if you're, if, if you're not at a half million dollars, like 80% of your time needs to be spent on, on your sales and marketing. Like, I believe that most people have that, that flip, especially in the coaching space. They spend any 80% of their time developing content, writing blog articles, you know, developing the course, going into the studio, hiring video people. When it's like, they don't have every, anyone to like actually deliver it to. That's what I mean by like clients' lives don't change unless they actually become clients. So that's why like, I believe everyone needs to start, you know, with their enrollment process, with, with their marketing. So 80% of the time. So number one is 80% of their time needs to be spent on the sales and marketing. Um, number two is that, uh, most people will start with marketing in, in, instead of sales. Um, I believe that happens for a couple reasons. Number one is because there's so many amazing marketers out there that teach us if we just build the like automated funnel of doom that pumps us high quality leads in our cash register rings while we sleep, that you know our lives will change and we'll be able to go go to Cabo and sip cronos on the beach while our, our our bank account grows, right? So I believe that's one of the reasons. But it's also it's so much easier. It's so much like sales is confronting. Like it's a confronting thing, and so. Um, one of my mentors, I forget who said, but you can't market yourself. You can't market yourself out of a sales problem. Hmm. So be, being able to, so it doesn't matter how amazing your marketing is. If you don't know how to close a deal, if you don't know how to get a client, it doesn't matter how amazing that, you, that, that your marketing is. So the second tip would be most people focus on marketing when they really need to focus on sales. Cause also in, and this is like a more advanced thing, but like your sales process will give you what the most effective marketing is going to be. Like those sales sure. calls, those enrollment calls, that is literally the greatest, most valuable research data you can ever get. Because the challenges that they're showing up to you on those calls, the reasons why they're coming to you, that's what you need to put <laughs> with your marketing. Because then you want to put it in their words, you know, how they're saying it. So that's number two. Um, number three would be... Um, What, what was your question one more time? Like biggest mistakes that, that people are making right now in, in growing their businesses. Totally, totally. Yeah. So 80% of the time, um, the focus, they focus on marketing, not sales. And then I would say the, the third one is that their like business, their business engine 
isn't in alignment with their revenue and, 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 and in their revenue and their lifestyle goals. So what do I mean by that? So like if I flipped up the hood of your business right now, like what type of, of engine would I see? So like if you have a go-kart, for example, a go-kart goes 30 to 35 miles per hour, right? And if you have the highest octane racing gas and you pour that into a go-kart, it's still only going to go 30 to 35 miles per hour. Or on the other hand, if you have a Ferrari and a Ferrari engine and you pour high octane racing gasoline into the Ferrari engine, that, that's going to go, you know, 220, 225 miles per hour. So what I believe a lot of mistakes that people make is that they don't even know what business engine that they have to start with. Mm. And if th their goals are that they want to be in that Ferrari, you know, they want to have a seven figure business, but their business engines like a go-kart doesn't matter how high quality of the fuel you pour in. doesn't matter how amazing your webinar is. doesn't matter how high quality the leads are they're getting from Facebook or speaking on stages or whatever it is like your, your, your business engine will only go so fast. And so I believe that most entrepreneurs, their vision and their business model don't line up. Yeah. So getting so, crystal clear on that. So that's the mistake. How to fix that is just get super clear on what the vision is and make sure their their business engine is in alignment with their revenue and their lifestyle goals. So that's a really really good point. Let's delve a little bit deeper on that. This this concept of the business engine. You know, when people are starting, one of the one of the things that I see is they tend to not know what to put their attention on first. So you're trying to spin like eight different plates and someone's like, you know, build your marketing and create your blogs and do your videos and learn to sell. And they're like, I don't fucking know what to do. Um, and I think in that lies that problem of people build an engine based on what they see and what others are telling them instead of what is actually, like you said, is in alignment for them and what they truly want. So in those early stages, what, what do you see someone can focus on early on to make the biggest impact? What would be that like 20% uh, of their focus would give them that 80% result? They need to talk to humans. Like this is like the, <laughs> literally, it's like the thing that, I mean, I'm sure you guys can count this all the time. Like it's what sure. they avoid most. Sure. Like talk to humans. Like, cause I, like, I'll tell my clients to, to go to like local networking events. Like this isn't like an advanced strategy. It's not sexy at all. It's old school. And the reason why I say that, or I, 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 I suggest that is because it will build their certainty around something new. Like the reason why like a new business and being an entrepreneur, like it, there is a lot of, there's a lot of uncertainty there. And there's a lot of uncertainty in, 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 in their confidence too. So like from a like, like meta level of what, of what that does is it gives them certainty and it, cause it gives them practice in communication, what they're doing. Like if they ever in a job and now they're an entrepreneur, they actually go to and they meet new people and they have to say they're owning, Hey, I'm the creator of the, of the, you know, effortless enrollment blueprint, or they're saying I'm the, I'm the creator of, of, you know, biz, business breakthrough, where I help, you know, small businesses scale from six to seven or whatever their, their thing is. Right. So being able to get in person and to talk to a human is so much more valuable than like watching 800 YouTube videos, in, in my opinion. So I would say, yeah, the one, number one thing is talk to humans, like talk to people and see how you can help them, see what people need. Yeah, there's um, one of the things I learned like really, really early on is, is this process because everyone's like, what do I do? What can I offer? And I think there's something in every single one of us that we do effortlessly. You know, it's something that, that we love researching. It's something that we love learning about. It's something that our friends come to us for naturally. It's, it's, it's that, that gift is not something that's just like one, one day on a Thursday when it's foggy and rainy outside, you're like, you know what? This is it. it it's like, you, you kind of already know what it is. It's just a matter of figuring out where the need is in the market and how your gift can fit into that. And that kind of brings me to my next point, which I'm sure people ask you all the time. And this might be like people's, uh, one of their rebuttals, but you know, especially in San Diego now, you could literally walk out your door and like throw a rock and hit 12 coaches. <laughs> I do it. I do it every morning from my balcony. Right. <laughs> yeah. I have so, a little slingshot. So I think there's a conversation that, you know, I'm not going to be successful because I'm never going to be like so-and-so or there's so many other people doing this. Why would anyone come to me? What would you say to that? I believe we are unique as humans. Like we're, we're very, very unique creatures. And like number one, there's what, there's like seven point something 
billion people on the planet. And to, to, to create a highly successful business, you literally only need like a small, 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 small handful. On Facebook, I just did the study. So it's like 2.3 billion people on Facebook. So to think that, you know, you can't capture, you know, 10 people to, 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 to this is not 10, 10 of those people who you, you can really help. So that's just a, a, a like marketing frame um, from more of a like a different frame, I'll just call it is like, so, so literally if, if, if us three stood on stage and if we read the same scripts, give the same presentation, a certain, and there's a thousand people in the room, a certain percentage of that people would gravitate more towards guy. A certain percentage of people would gravitate more towards Elon. A certain percentage of people would gravitate more towards me. We're saying the same words, mm -hmm. same words. Mm -hmm. So I think it was Brendan Bouchard. Maybe he says a lot of good shit, but um, <gasps> the, the message needs different messengers. You know, the message needs different messengers. And like that example I gave of us on stage and people grabbing towards two different people, like even for those listening to this right now, I think there are certain people listening who are gravitating more towards me than towards Elon, than towards Guy, right? Sure. They're like, oh yeah, but that, that stuff Alex says sucks, but what Guy said was awesome. Mm -hmm. You know, and if, even if we're saying the same thing, but in a different way, right? So I believe that like, that's the same thing is we need to get out of our own way. Yeah. You know, if like if someone, if you want to do something, like you'll never know, like you can think about it for years. I think one of the greatest tragedies, you know, people on, on are dying on their deathbed and they're saying you know oh i wish i would have done this i wish i would have done that you know so at least give yourself the like chance to like to put yourself out there and do it yeah yeah i i don't think that, that you know the the past generations that messaging just didn't resonate with them all that well you know they they were all about survival and getting three square meals on the table we're, we're at a time and, and this is why i think there's a little bit of that that friction that we see between generations because they're like what do you mean you could do what you love what do you mean you can be masterful to make money? It, it's, it's not, it's, it, that conversation is not quite there, at least not for a, a large part of that population. And certainly people are opening up to it. I see our parents kind of going through that same uh, question right now. You know, it's food on the table or, or having a life I love basically, but it's kind of like unfounded. And, and I totally agree. The mess, the message does these different messengers. Every person has some kind of, thing that happened to them when they were little and created some kind of modality from which they communicate from, from which they uh, expel their energy from. And somebody else who aligns with how it is that you operate is going to be like, oh, they're doing it the right way. That person is doing it the wrong way. And they're all doing the same exact thing. Um, if, 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 we, if there could only be one messenger, we'd only have one Italian restaurant in our town. Yeah. Right. They're like all over. I, I like San Diego drives me crazy. It's like the health food capital of the world, but there's just Italian restaurants everywhere. And every time a new restaurant opens here in Encinitas, it's like another Italian restaurant with the same, with the same food and whatever, whatever. And then somebody will tell you, Oh, that's the best one. Uh -huh. And it's like, what, what makes that the best one? So I think it's a lot of, a lot of the same thing. Um, I'm curious. So for you, you know, we were talking to Landon and this is where it's coming from. It, it's like, you don't have a sales problem. You have a prospect problem. You're telling people to just get on the phone and do sales. So where, where are these people identifying like early on in any, anybody's tenure, where are they identifying these prospects outside of doing like the normal network marketing, call your family and friends? Like how are, how are you getting people to talk to people who are qualified to be speaking to at that time, especially early on in the phases? Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I believe because so much of my high end client stuff is about who. It's like getting really clear on like who's your niche, and like there's a lot of people who teach that, right? Like who's your dream avatar, and I believe so many people just like breeze over that shit. But it's so important. It's like it's 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 the core. And so where I start, and I learned this from uh, Shannon, as Shannon Graham asked this question, it's um, who are you most probable to make the deepest the impact with? So who are you most probable to make the, the, the deepest impact with? And starting there from that place, you know, and there's like also some fear that comes to that is, oh my goodness, could I help that person? Would, would that person listen to me? Because it's also, it's usually someone who's, who is successful in life. So like, for example, like, um, or I'll, 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 I'll save the example. Um, but like at once you're clear, then I believe it, it's, it's about going out and talking to people, you know? So like networking groups is, it, it's a place to start, you know, it's a place to start. I start everyone there, even if they're like highly successful, just because of that experience. But where do they find them? I mean, I'm a big fan of, um, of like seminars and events. 
So going to events, it's, it's honestly like a more qualified version of a, of a network group. And I believe that, you know, your ability to connect with someone in person rather than online is, is, is it's, it's always going to, to, to be greater. I believe no matter how amazing that you, of the online marketing that you have. So when you're in, in the space of going to an event, so if you're like just starting out as a health coach, you know, you're just starting out as a health coach. If you go to, you can go to a health seminar or you can go to a business seminar because you're just starting a business, you know? So you're at an event with, you know, a hundred, 200 other people who are all like of a similar mindset. They're all there for growth. They're all there to improve their business, to improve their life. So going there and like talking to people there, um, that's also a great way to like get, get a feel for what's out there, you know? Because with online marketing, I, I, I just don't believe it's the, it's, the, it's the first place for people to start. I think it's an amazing tool. But I believe if they haven't done the actual groundwork of talking to humans um, and really getting to face-to-face and being able to like make offers face-to-face or just talk about, not even making offers, take that out of the picture, just talking about what they do face-to-face, that they will, have, uh, they will definitely come up with challenges of if, they, if, they try to go, if they try to do anything online before that so so just to follow up on that um in the beginning when you're kind of still trying to figure out what it is that you offer and especially when you're meeting people um how do you get out of the way of showing up at these events and having an agenda or like so most people will go to these events they're like all right my goal is i'm going to prospect you know three five whatever clients and so then I'm sure you've met these people at events where they're like card pushers, I call them. They like go and try to meet everyone. They'll like say hi to everyone for like five minutes and like this, is what I do, and all right. And usually I go like this. Um, because, I, and this just might be me, but like my take on those people is like if you're, sle- if you're like that sleazy to do that, then there's absolutely no way that I'm gonna ever work with you. Um, so I know in the beginning, like people, when they're trying to offer their services, especially in the beginning are weird, right? Like once you're grounded in who you are and what you have, it kind of like comes out organically in a conversation. Um, so what would you tell people that, cause I know we've all kind of <laughs> seen those people. Um, how, how would you train people to a not do that and be, you know, what, what would it look like instead? Yeah, that's such a great, well, first of all, I've never encountered those people before, so I've never, (laughs) (laughs) Um, but if I did, (laughs) no, I totally, I I totally, it's so painful to watch at an event. I know exactly what you're talking about, you know, but because also like I see, and I'm sure that you can also see through, see this too, of like, I can tell like they really want to help, like they're, they're trying, you know, but it's just not landing. Right. So um, I believe a sale can never be closed that hasn't yet been opened. So opening the sale is such, it's, 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 it's an art and a science and to give it down to the most basic form is it's, it's all questions, you know, it's all questions. It's like, Hey, like, I mean, I'll start here. Like one of the lines that like my mastermind has used to sell millions of dollars is, Hey, I think I can help you with that. I don't know, but I think I can, would you be open to exploring that? Okay. I think I can help you. I don't know. I don't, I don't truly know, but I, I think I can, you know, would you be open to exploring that? So that's just like a, a basic question of like, how do you, how do you open the sale? Right. So taking it back to an event, it's like, you just want to have regular conversations. Like this is the thing is like sales are just having a conversation, you know, but, but then people get all fucking weird and really yes. awkward, you know? And it's like, uh, I have a health business, you know, or whatever. Um, <laughs> But it's just like, hey, you know, or it's like, <laughs> it's so interesting, right? So like, I so would true. just say like, have regular conversations and like, don't, don't go into it with your goal is I'm getting five clients, hell or high water, no matter what, you know, it's like, yeah, cool, sure. like I'm going to make, I'm going to make 10 genuine connections and really learn about uh, really, really create a real connection with them and, and learn more about what they want and, and what their health looks like. Yep. So just a little simple framework is just like, and I, I believe this is what I mean by truth outsells tactics. So I believe like at an event, I've been really successful with, you know, when I first went to events, when I first started, I was like, Hey, like, you know, I, I, I used to work, you know, <laughs> for one of my mentors, I, 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 I've, I helped him grow his business to a really big amount, you know? And so I'm here over like, I'm, I'm finding my own voice in it. Like, I believe I can help you. So would you, would you be open if I asked you a couple of questions about your business? You know, so just something simple like that of just like owning it of like, hey, like I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm actually kind of nervous. Like this is this is really 
vulnerable for me to share and to be here of going out on my own. And like, I know I can help people. I've done it in other businesses, but I haven't done it for myself yet. You know, would you mind if I asked you a couple of questions? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's really good. And, and the one other thing that I'd add, cause we've had people, I don't know if you know if it's on the have it all podcast, but definitely on the performance enhancing podcast that we had before uh, we had a few people who were like, you know, master connectors and networkers and stuff like that. And I think one of the most uh, effective ways that I've seen is instead of having that agenda of, you know, five people or 10 prospects or anything like that, it's you walk into a room with this mindset of being a connector and you start to listen to people like you, you meet people and the whole time what you're doing is you're, you're trying to get like what they're about and what their deepest need is at this moment, right? And their deepest need might not be in your wheelhouse at all, at like at all, right? Like someone is, oh my God, I'm struggling. And the one thing that I'm looking for is this attorney who specializes in this and blah, blah, blah. Well, guess what? If you've been open and you've kind of had that mindset, then chances are, then you know someone who's either that exact person or someone one removed from that exact person. And the best thing you can ever offer is like, hey, I'd love to connect you to someone who I think could solve that problem for you. And if you just go in with that mindset, A, the whole conversation tends to be about the other person because you are way more interested to find out who they are, what they're about and what their needs are. Now, of those millions of conversations, guess what? When you like offer someone, hey, I'd love to connect you to so-and-so. First of all, they're giving you their contact information. That's, that's a done deal, right? You can do that even on the spot. Second thing is they're always then interested. What is it? The, the obvious question at the end of it is like, well, you even haven't told me like what you do. How can I help you? And it always ends like that. And at the end of the day, it's way easier to tell someone what it is that you do and then them go like, oh, you should speak to so-and-so because maybe it's not them. Um, and I found that to be super, super easy. The conversations flow really, really great. And at the end of the day, Guy and I, like when we started our business, I said to him, because you're always trying to figure out like, how are you going to measure your success? You know? And I said, I, we will have known this is Tory Prime has made it when other people are speaking our words out there. Like when people boomerang your ideology back and they're using your words and describing your services and businesses to others out there in that way, you've, you fucking made it because then you just have people out there speaking who you are and your value to the world. And, um, yeah, I just think it makes life really, really easy, uh, when you do that. But the second you have an agenda, like human beings have such a bullshit detector. Like we've all been in conversations where you're sitting there talking to someone, you're like, you are so sleazy. Like it doesn't matter what you tell me. You can have the best, you can have the most amazing script in the world, but just coming out of you, it just sounds sleazy because everything about you is just sleazy. Mm -hmm. Like I have to make the sale. Mm -hmm. um, did, was there something you wanted to add, bro? I, I, I think it would be interesting. Um, you know, exercise we find works over and over again is like people are really scared to get on video just making videos of yourself speaking. There's a lot you learn about that. It would be, and I know people like record their um, sales calls. I've actually never heard anyone say like record it on video, like watch yourself make a sales call. Just because of, you're going to see your body mannerisms. You're going to see where you tighten up. You're going to see where you're enjoying the conversation. Um, and it just kind of hit me now that it would be like really great. Cause a lot of times it's like, if I'm watching someone make a sales calls, I'm like, Ooh, God, why are you doing that? Right. But it's just because like you don't have an experience of yourself that way. I think that's that's it's such a powerful tool uh, to learn about your communication styles. Um, so it might even be something I take on too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, cool, Alex. So we're we're basically coming to uh, to the top of the hour here. So first of all, I want to thank you for mm -hmm. spending some time with us and uh, and us finally making this happen. So first of all, thank you. Um, Second, I'm sure people are going to have a ton of questions uh, and I'm sure this kind of like ignited certain aspects of them. So how do people reach out to you? How do people find out more about what you do and where to connect with you? Yeah. So first of all, thanks so much for having me on, man. It's been, it's been a blast. I'm sure we could, we could literally just sit here. We could talk about all sorts of things. hours, <laughs> hours, man. So we would definitely got to set that up sometime. Um, next time you're in San Diego, definitely. Absolutely, um, man. Yeah. So if there's a couple ways, so um, number one, I, 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 I wanted to 
but really uh, give everyone listening to, uh, a uh, free gift of what's been really powerful for me. So if you go to my website, alexjmoscow.com, A-L-E-X-J-M-O-S-C-O-W.com, there's a, there's a free 60-minute training on there. It's my six effortless enrollment essentials. It's everything you, you need to know to build or to, to enroll high-end clients. Um, 60 minute training on there, some of the best content that I have. So you can go there to get that. If you wanna connect with me personally, Facebook is by far the, um, the, the easiest way to, to do so. I also do Facebook Lives and I post up content on there as well. So if you wanna to continue to get uh, more information like what I've shared on here, my Facebook is uh, facebook.com slash my name, Alex J Moscow, spelled the same way, A-L-E-X-J-M-O-S-C-O-W. Not to be confused with Alex. Alex. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, Alex and Alex are actually spelled the same way. It's just an <laughs> emphasis on a different syllable. So yeah, it's true. It's the same, same. Dude, uh, so much fun spending time with you. Thank you for taking the time out of your day and sharing this amazing wisdom with our listeners. And yeah, guys, go check him out. Amazing man, amazing story, uh, and just gets amazing results for his clients. All right, we'll see you guys all on the next Have It All podcast. Have an amazing rest of your week. Well, thanks so much for having me, guys. Bye, guys. Later. Thanks, Alex.